In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do hexagonal Christmas stocking. This is called On the Dot Stocking, a free pattern by Yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Christmas stocking. It's made up of 17 hexagons. They are all the same as far as design. The only difference that you see is the color. So it's a very retro kind of look. For my particular stocking, I decided to go all one solid color and I decided to use the Karen Simply Saw Party Yarn and I've done mine in red and it has a bit of a shimmer and sparkle to it. So it's really quite amazing. So let me uh, tell you a little bit more about this pattern and then we'll get started on doing the, uh, the prep work for this tutorial. So as I mentioned, each of the hexagons is the exact identical pattern. So you just have to make 17 of these to, and then put it together just like you see in this particular layout. So what we want to do is that before you begin to do the stocking formation like this, we have to create a stocking um, flat piece that looks like this. So you can count that there's all 17. But there's a little bit of a catch to this particular pattern which is not very obvious on here and I wanna show you that right now. So here's a blown up version of the, that same diagram. Okay, just like you see. So I blued, I blued it up, I blowed it up and here we go and I don't wanna start giggling on this tutorial today. What we have right here, D and G and E and F are not to be assembled. So when you go to lay this flat and you put it all together, do not assemble these two seam lines. So you want to have this gap because the reason for it is that B ends up over top of the stocking. So here is an example of what it looks like when you put it all together. So if, say you're not even gonna crochet it and you wanna use this paper, um, you can see how it comes together in paper format and how it all works out. So it's actually really quite amazing. So the biggest tip is do not put D and G, E and F together when you're doing this complete configuration when you're going to lay it down. So how you look at it is that you have to look at the side. So I can tell that this is the top because there's no letters here. Do you see A, B, C and see all these smaller little letters here? That's the attachment. So A attaches to A and then B attaches to B and C C and D and etc. So right here for example we have E and F. So if this was attached you would never be able to get E in there. So you gotta make sure you don't sew these together in the initial and then F is attaching to here and it works out. You just have to trust in, in it I guess. So that's how you would put it together. So let me show you how to do one of the hexagons first and then I'm gonna show you some tips on putting this together and then go from there. So let's begin. You'll notice in the pattern it's asking for Karen Simply Soft Holiday or Karen Simply Soft and just regular. I'm using Karen Simply Soft Party because I like to be different but uh, mine is a solid color that I've been working with but I'm gonna show you how to make sure you change that color if you wish and again the color changes are completely up to you. You're gonna need a size a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's start off with a slip knot. So you have to make 17 of these identical. Um, if you're following the color schemes th that information is given to you on the pattern. So the hexagons go really quick so let's begin. So we're going to chain four. Remember that the slip knot on the hook does not count as one. So one, two, three and four and then go into the starting chain and yarn over and pull through and then you have the interior ring of your hexagon. You wanna treat this straggler like it's part of that ring and just wrap it around the outside so when you go to play with it, it gets stuck underneath so you'll never see a starting point or any loose ends at the beginning or at the middle of your hexagon. Let's begin round number one. We wanna start off by chaining three. Remember in the, in the rules of crochet when you do this is that chaining a three counts as a double crochet. So let's do that. So one, two, three and we wanna do two more double crochets into the center of the ring. And again trapping that straggler down on top so that it gets buried underneath and you'll never see it. So hexagons have six sides. So this is one side of six. So to do the next group of three you have to chain one first. Go back into the center of the ring for another three double crochets. So every one of the sides has three double crochets associated to it. 
Okay, so there's my another group of three. So chain one and then come back into the center ring. Now you're going to notice uh, as I get a little bit further that you're gonna run out of space in the center but because you are going around the center ring you can always shift things in order to move and make room for more. It does all fit. So now I can see that I have three sides. One, two, three. So I have another three to go. So chain one first and continue to double crochet in groups of three. Okay, and so that was the fourth side, chain one, going back in. So I'm looking like I'm running out of space. So I get really close on that fifth one and I just have to make room for that six. Okay, so I can see, so I got one, two, three, four, and five. I need six groups of three. See how I just kind of shifted and then I chain one and then do the final group of three. This is my sixth side and what I want to do then is chain one and then just join it to the big top of the chain three that you started with like so. And that concludes round number one. So you should be able to count the groups of three. I know it's kind of tight in there but it has to be in order to be in the center. Now because we have buried the center just like so you're gonna have that, that string hanging out. You just gotta take the pair of scissors and just simply trim that out and nobody will ever know where you stopped and started and it's a nice clean start. So let's turn this back around and let's begin round number two. So round number two we're at the beginning of the group of three. Okay, so everything is in group of threes. So we have to slip stitch till we get to the first chain one space. Okay, so you're just gonna come along the top and just going into the next stitch and slip stitch that one and you're gonna wanna slip stitch the final one of the three because you started at the first one and then slip stitch right into in between. So in the chain one space slip stitch and now you're ready to begin round number two. Round number two we're gonna start off by chaining three which counts as a double crochet and we're going to double crochet two more times into that chain one space. So each one of the corners for the hexagon now have um, this configuration. So we have a group of three we chain one and we do another group of three in the same chain one space and that becomes a new corner. So the corners for these always have these um, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. Okay. So now that you've done that chain one and just simply come back and just look for the next group of three. Okay and then just come on to the other side of it into the chain one space and double crochet three more times. Chain one and double crochet again three more times. So that's how you're gonna do this entire round. I'll show you one more time. So after you get that done uh, just simply chain one and then just go. You can see that there's three. So one, two and three and it's a chain one space and another group of three, double crochets, okay chain one and then three double crochets again. I did screw up one of my hex diagonals and I noticed it afterward that I had forgotten to put in my chain or three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. So I ended up with a corner that was kind of missing half of it. So continue that same configuration going all the way around. Just be mindful to make sure that you're playing within the chain one spaces and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I've almost come all the way back around and I can see I should have six sides. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Don't forget after you do your three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet you have to chain one first and then join to the top. So I'm gonna give you two options here. Mine is a solid color red. There's only one round left. That's how fast these things go. So you can see the size of it. So if you wanted to keep the same color you're just going to slip stitch like you did before to the first chain one space and it's right in the corner and then you can begin the instructions. If you were going to change color this is where you're going to do it and I'm gonna change color just so that people have this as a reference and all I'm just gonna do is that I've trimmed my yarn and I'm just going to wrap it around. So when we go to start the next round we have to start right into a corner. That's why I've had you slip stitch over if you were not changing color but if you are changing color you have to start off in the corner anyway and I'm just weaving in my ends and I'm going to bring up some gray for the next color. So this is what it looks like. You should be able to see the six sides 
by now and let's do the final round together. So I've got my next color and I'm going to start off with a slip knot. I just like starting off that way. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna start off in the corner. You should know that if you are going to do this, the sewing of it, you should use the same exterior color. So all of the rounds, you'll notice that it's all white that is basically connecting. So I'd recommend that. It's just, it's a lot nicer look. So we're going to start off in a corner. So it doesn't matter which one you start off with as long as it's a chain one space right into a corner. And we're gonna start in and I'm just gonna grab the yarn from the other side and attach and then chain three. One, two, three. The wonderful thing about this is that the corners are the identical to what you already did below. So this is already one of the double crochets. So I gotta double crochet two more times. Make sure that this is down on top so that you can trap it underneath and get, so that you have your three, chain one and then three more double crochets into the same corner. And now that that straggler has been trapped underneath all those stitches, you can safely trim that afterward and not worry about it falling out. So you're going to then chain one and into this space, okay, so here's the corner over here, but the first space, you're going to put two double crochets only, followed by a chain one. And what we have to just then do is that we're going to in the next corner is the same thing as what you already know. So it's gonna be three double crochets. Chain one and three double crochet. Okay, so I'll review the side one more time. So this is my third one going in. So once you get a corner done, chain one. So this is the space that's in between the two corners. It's only two double crochets. You're going to instinctively wanna do three because your brain has been programmed with the, with the corners. Just make sure it's only two because it doesn't look right if it's not. So then the next corner, so chain, sorry, two double crochets, chain one and then a corner again. So three double crochet. Chain one and three double crochet. Please do that all the way around and we'll come back in just a moment. I'll finish this off and then I'm gonna show you the start of the assembly process. When you come all the way back around, you're gonna finish off with your two, chain one, and then just join it to the top of the first chain three. So that's it. That's how these um, hexagons are. You need to make 17 of these in order to proceed to the next part of the tutorial. I'd recommend that you getting all 17 done prior to doing the attaching of the, of the graph that we see or the diagram that we see within the pattern. And I'm going to show you tips on how I did it. Um, I have a little bit of a different way but of course my ideas are just ideas and if you have something better and you prefer something else then you're welcome to do so. What I do is uh, trim out your, your strands now and get those out of the way so you're gonna have to get rid of them anyway so you might as well just do it now and then you can uh, end up with a nice clean uh, pile of granny hexagons and then you can proceed to the next part. So get 17 done and then I'll see you back here in just a moment and I'll show you how to proceed. So now that you have your 17 done, you have to come back to this chart and you can see it in the pattern. And what we want to do is that we want to start sewing everything together in order to form it. So we have to have all 17 of these done and we put them together. It doesn't matter if you haven't followed the color scheme, it's up to you, but A, uh, like A, B, C and D that you see here are just the colorways of the center dot color. That's all those mean. What we're more interested in is the, the outside letters because we're gonna be able to attach. So what you need to do is that get all your uh, granny squares together and then uh, we're ready for the next part. The next part of this is that I want you to lay these down on a table. It's a lot easier to do this on the table so therefore you can follow this diagram. And what I want you to do is just grab each one of the hexa hexagons and just tie them together to match the formation that you see within this diagram right here. Okay, so you're just gonna continue to match. So what I just decided to do, took yarn and I just went in between this span over here inside and I tied them all together and then if there was some that are attaching down, I would just tie them. So basically everything comes together so that it's all tied together as so it's one big solid unit. What I highly recommend though is right, right where D and G and E and F are, we're not to attach these. So do not attach this to these sides here. Leave it open so that you'll never forget because once you start turning it up over uh, flipping it upside down and stuff to be able to sew you might forget that you should not have to do that. So if you don't tie it right away then you will not forget uh, not to, to join that seam. 
So once you have it all together and you can see it all is attaching it should be one separate unit except for these should be broken open. And then what you wanna do is flip it to the other side. So you wanna flip it to the wrong side. So flip it over and then what we want to do is whip stitch on the back side of this only. So you end up with a beautiful finish on the front side. So let me pull up my example that I have off camera here. So this is the front side. You can see the beautiful stitch work that is all in the join but I did a join it in the back side here. Okay, you can't even see it because it's so well done and it's all whip stitch. So you want to make sure that when you're sewing together you're gonna sew on the back side. As you start to sew them together I recommend pulling out the strings that you have tied together so therefore you can kind of see where you need to go and it kind of gives you a sense of accomplishment to it the more string and strands you can pull out. You just have to kind of like just follow the path of least resistance I guess. Sometimes you just have to do a little section but just kind of do a path so that it does a lot of maximization in order to put things together. You might just wanna go around. You can go in any direction that you wish. The key element though is make sure D and G and E and F are not attached here and and we wanna follow that same configuration just like so. So let me show you how to do a whip stitch. So I'm going to start off with one side as a slip knot. This is my own personal preference. Leave that loop open and you wanna do it long enough so that you can do a whole good span at one time and you want to get your darning needle out and feed your, the eye of the needle. So what I wanna do is that I wanna turn it to the back side. So this is the front side of it. I wanna turn it to the back side and I wanna attach this one that I've been working on. So it's not gonna be part of this but I just wanna show it to you for demonstration reasons. So what we, we have here is that when we turn it around you can see that there is a two loops okay and most of us will know these as stitches. Well you have the front loop and the back loop based on how you're viewing it. So if you have it and it's turned upside down the front loop is actually the back loop and etc. So try not to boggle your mind too much with that. So I wanna turn this over and I wanna turn this one over too. So I wanna sew only on the back side. So what I wanna do is I wanna lay it into the actual um, project like so and let me show you. So when I go into the stitch what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure I don't capture both of the strands of the stitch. I only wanna capture the one that's closest to me only. And this is what creates that beautiful finish and you can see that you have a beautiful line and that's because you're only going into one stitch. You will get more of a, um, a different look if you go into both and it would be kind of um, very obvious and probably not so pretty. So you wanna come into uh, a corner. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the corner in this one. I'm only gonna go into one strand only and I'm gonna come into the corner that I'm attaching it to and go into one strand only. And just pull and what I wanna do is that I wanna put the needle through the slip knot like so and pull, t t pull snug, don't go crazy with it and simply just move down the line. So just go into one strand on one side, one strand on another and what I like to do is just I make sure that I try to get the straggler underneath the stitching. Okay, so I move down the line like that. It's really easy once you get a hold of it. Once this is trapped under enough spaces I just kinda trim it out and I don't worry about it. So you continue to work all the way uh, into doing your seam all the way through. So as you get in and progress you're gonna pull out your strings as you're sewing them together. But the key element here is to make sure that you only go into one strand uh, on each side. Okay and because each one of the hexagons are the exact same size you will never have a problem with the stitches not lining up unless you've messed up in your stitch counts in some way and if you have just improvise don't have to redo everything because you may have made one little mistake somewhere. And that's all you're gonna do. So you're gonna whip stitch everything together. When we go to put this together in the final we're gonna whip stitch it together as well. So this is what's important is that uh, when you go to whip stitch you'll have like the straight lines going across but if you use the same color so if I use gray on both sides and this was gray you'll never see it and in this case I used red and you don't even see that the lines going across even though they're, they're there that they're there because the colors are matching. So just that's how you would whip stitch when we go to do this project. Okay so now I'm ready for the assembly so I have this all laid out and it matches exactly what you see here. Again this is 
D and G and E and F. They're not joined here. And what I wanna do is I wanna start off in the top. It says A, B, C, D. So I assume that you want, the designer wants us to start us off the top. Speaking first hand, I would start at the top as well. I think that's a good call. What you wanna do is you wanna have the front side or the, the right side facing up towards you. And when we go to fold this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna cause us to have the wrong side facing us. And this is the side that we wanna apply the sewing to anyway. So when we go to do this, this will be inside out. Okay, so what we need to do is that we need to follow the instructions and match up exactly what we have. So we have on the upper corner, we have A and then here's A. But I have to tell you, once you start this, it's gonna be very obvious. Okay, so what you wanna just do is that you wanna just start folding things. And look, this whole thing kind of folds over just like this. That's how easy it is and things just kind of line up on their own. So what I wanna do is that I wanna grab my yarn strand that I have that I used for tying and I want to just come in the edge of A and A and I wanna just tie a little bow tie. If you wanna use stitch markers, uh, some people suggest that it's a better idea. It's up to you. Um, I have a lot of spare yarn. I think a lot of us do. Is that I'm just gonna use the yarn and tie a bow tie just to hold it together so I can make the right judgment call. So it seems obvious to me that this here, this is B and B. It's pr it seems pretty obvious to me so I'm just gonna attach down here for the next one. And I'm basically creating a line of seaming that I'm gonna do all the way down. Okay. So I'm just following this up. So this is E, E, or what is this? A D and G and this is E enough. See how they're not attached? Well, that's because this is part of the top part of the stocking. So I can see what we got here. So this is going to be F right here and I'm looking at where is F attaching to. So it's gonna be right there. So this one is a little bit more tricky so I will apply a strand there. And tricky meaning that I wanna make sure it doesn't, um, I'm not got the wrong fold. And the trick is, is just to get it laid out. It's easier to do it like this than it is to do each individual. And then once you start flipping it upside down and, and start to do the sewing, you may forget where things are. So this is I. Okay. Let me just uh, get my bearings straight and let me just uh, be right back. So I'm just uh, continuing to attach and I'm just kind of folding things up and things are just working out. Okay, so I'm just gonna attach. I wanna make sure I get into the right spaces at least um, for when they match each other so that when you go to sew, you can be guaranteed that you're starting in the right spot and it's not gonna be out of whack for you. Okay, check out that. Now I wanna uh, put this one together too just to make sure I don't lose my place here. So coming in and in. On paper it's hard to see how this would fold together to make a stocking but then once you actually get your project done you can see how it does. So you can actually see at this particular point as you're working on it is that the back here right at the back of the heel. It's not sewed but this one is kind of folded up over. So in the end what we have to do is that we have to match, start matching things. And what do we have right here? So O and O. So these two seams go together. So the only complex thing is basically the end. And you will notice that when I did my paper and I'll pull that out in just a second is that the outside Um, toe point is a little different. So when you look at the paper here, it kind of looks like this. Okay. So that's there. That's there. It actually helped me that I did that on paper first to be honest with you. So if you're feeling adventurous and feel like to uh, go for the tape, and try the sample done in paper format, it's up to you. 
Okay, and here's the final. So all I'm gonna do now is just start to sew along the seams in the back or in the, using the whip stitch. And because I'm looking at the inside of the stocking, I just wanna concentrate on the, on the one loop for when you go to do the whip stitch. So at this point, I think I'm done. There should not be any seams that are left un unaccounted for. See how that kind of just does it right in the front. So you got this. I'm just gonna throw another one in there. The worst part you can do is start sewing this and then all of a sudden you start sewing the wrong one together. together as well just to make sure. Okay, so basically this is a stock and this is how it looks. I put all the major seams together and all I'm just gonna do now is just follow it along and put it together and then we're gonna turn this inside out at the end. Let me review on slip stitch or on the whip stitch one more time. To do the whip stitch, just uh, grab your darning needle once again and I'm making mine all one color so I'm using red. And on the other side of this put a, a slip knot and loop that out. So what I wanna do is that I wanna match everything line or like stitch by stitch. So I'm gonna come up right into a corner over here and come to the corner to the other side once you get it started it's pretty easy and you're just getting one strand of each okay and then you pull through and then you wanna put your needle through that slip knot to lock that into place and all you're just gonna do is that you're gonna work yourself down through the seam so you just come to the next stitch that's available to you just go into one strand on both sides You wanna pull it snug but you don't wanna be crazy about it either. You're not tying a boat to a dock. Okay, so I'm gonna just jump right over top of this white spot. I'm just going into the stitches where it is. And I can take that out after I'm confident that I've gotten past that point. So I will probably get down here and then I'll take that spot out. And it's a sense of accomplishment every time you remove a, one of these out. So you're just gonna work your way down the sock the stocking just like this and then you're gonna turn it inside out. So let me do that off camera and see how this turns out in the end. So off camera I have been doing all the sewing and now I've turned it inside, it was inside out, now it's inside right and look the bottom of it actually looks like a stocking. You know when you go to put it together it kind of has these pointed edges and um, I noticed with myself is like oh my god is that ever gonna turn out but it does look it's like the perfect shape so now I can just do the back section. Let me show you how to make the hanger but it's perfect on both sides so you can hang it in either direction and uh, I actually think this is pretty cool. So let me do the back hanger and it's a nice fair size too. So hopefully you get lots of gifts in that thing. So let me just do the hanging loop next. Now the hanging loop is really simple. It's asking you to join and use uh, four strings at the same time. So you're gonna, so you're gonna put all your strings together. So if you were doing different colors, just do all your strings together. So all you just need to do is chain 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And that once you got your fifteen, just um, trim your yarn. You leave enough, enough of a yarn strand to go so that you can tie it right to the back of your stocking. So now you're gonna use these two strands and now you're gonna grab the back of your stocking. Okay, you kind of, it's, it's kind of very obvious on what it is. It's the last one. So if you're looking at it, it's like folded in half. Just come right up to the top and go right to a corner point. Go in grab your yarn strand and tie this puppy together. So of course I used all red. Um, 
I just wanted to. I just don't have any specific reason why I did. I just did it. <laughs> so you know a creativity is based on based on your ideas. So if you have other ideas for color formations that's completely up to you. It is your it is your home. Decorate it any way that you wish. Make it more comfortable for you. Once you have enough of these uh, tied okay just do a nice short strand like so and now I have a hanger for the back of my stocking just like so and now it's ready for the fireplace. Just run your eyes over it make sure that there's nothing uh, no loose ends coming out. Nothing is worse than you have somebody over and then they point that out for you. <laughs> you know family can be. So um, that's it for now and this is uh, my little stocking and uh, well it's not so little it's actually quite fabulous and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Enjoy your holiday season and hope to see people complete these and do show your creativity here on the Crochet Crowd Facebook. Until next time, see you. Bye bye.